Hi there, I'm Bob Rocha, Director of Education and Science Programs at the New Bedford Whaling Museum, and I'm going to show you how to make a blubber glove. Why a blubber glove? What's the purpose of making a blubber glove? Well, you probably know that whales, dolphins, and porpoises, otherwise known as cetaceans, all have a layer of blubber. Those that live near the equator have a fairly thin layer of it, but those like the bowhead whale, as seen here in Deborah Kramer's book, Smithsonian Ocean, like the bowhead right there, have up to 18 inches thick worth of blubber layer. And this is all about maintaining a constant body temperature and minimizing heat loss. So if you're near the equator, you're not going to lose much body heat because the water there is pretty warm. But the further north, the further away you go from the equator, whether it's north or south, you've got a greater chance of losing body heat to the ocean. So your blubber layer, if your cetacean is going to minimize that from happening. So to make a blubber glove, it's pretty simple. You need quart size Ziploc bags. You need some vegetable shortening, the human created version of blubber. Um, you're probably going to want duct tape because you want to stop your vegetable shortening from sneaking out of the bag. It's all pretty simple. And then a spoon for getting the shortening into the bag. So what I've done with the first quart size bag is I turned the top of it inside out just to cut down on the mess. But the second bag, you want to open it up and completely turn it inside out. Because later on, when you put these two bags together, you want the zips from this bag to meet up with the zips from that bag to help seal it up. So let's try not to make too much of a mess. I'm just going to get that in there and you can use the bag to take the shortening off the spoon. You can use a spoon, you can use a spatula, whatever you need to get this in there. And you certainly want to get at least probably six good spoonfuls in here. getting pretty heavy so we're just about there all right I think that should suffice so now I'll take the top put it back the way that it should be I'm going to smush this around a bit so I'm going to seal it up for a moment just so you get this stuff down to the bottom half of the bag mush it around so it's pretty level and even all the way through I'm going to open it back up. I'm going to take the inverted bag and I'm going to tuck it right in there, going right for the middle of this vegetable shortening that I put in. And there we go. Now I'm going to pull this other bag up around it. always a trick with Ziploc bags. You've got to get the zips to line up. I think we've got it there. Yeah. Get that telltale sign that those zips have, tell, telltale sound that those zips have lined up. And now to save time, I've already cut myself some strips of duct tape because how boring is that you having to watch me cut duct tape all right nobody wants to watch that so we'll put one piece on there I'm going to fold it in that's one side another piece we'll go to the other side that over and I cut a couple of smaller pieces to go on these two edges here because you will you will find if you don't do that this stuff will sneak out Now 
while I'm doing this, I'll point out that this lovely book behind me is just like Deborah, um, Deborah Kramer, who is a Massachusetts author. This book comes from Brian Scarry, who's also from Massachusetts, and this book is called Ocean Soul. It's got some fa his fantastic photos of right whales there. Got a cute little right whale model here. And of course, a Granger pottery humpback over there. Humpbacks and right whales have slightly different thicknesses of blubber, but they need them. Because right whales are on their way back up to Massachusetts. Some of them are already here and they're feeding. Put on a little more duct tape. And the humpbacks should be on their way up soon too. And if we're allowed to go out and do whale watches this summer, you'll almost guarantee to see a humpback. So, all right, so there we have it. So there's a blubber glove. And now the way you use this to get a sense of how well blubber insulates whales from the cold and prevents heat loss is you would get a bucket of icy water and you put this hand, gloved hand in the water, you put your ungloved hand in and you should really notice the difference very quickly. If you wanted to make a math activity out of it, you could time how long this one stays in, time how long this one stays in. And if you do have other people in the house with you, they can do it as well and you can graph it out. If you have a thermometer, you can put the thermometer in the water, put the thermometer in the glove, notice the difference in temperature. Pretty quick, pretty simple, very inexpensive, and you have yourself a teaching tool. And um, if you go shopping for these things, people in the grocery stores might give you funny looks because why are you buying shortening and bags and duct tape, but you know you're about to do a teaching activity. Have fun.